what would the subject's call be or uh, action towards capitalists? Uh, basically, that would be obliteration, right? It'd be a call to justice to obliterate the capitalist law of the superego, right? Of the terror, the terror of capitalism. So it, it all depends on what position any given non-subject would have to the subject as such. Is it part of its anxiety, that is to say the masses? Is it part of the revolutionary subject's uh, courage, um, which is to say class struggle? Is it part of the revolutionary party's um, terror, which is to say the dictatorship of the proletariat? Right, because that is the way in which the subject enforces consistency. Right, that's the law of the party, is terror, right, the dictatorship of the proletariat. Or is it in relation to justice, which is, right, communism as such. And so any given non-subjective element, right, because there's four virtues, any subjective element will behave different as part of its matrices of the subject. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and again, I would encourage anyone and everyone to read Alain Badu's Theory of the Subject, um, which you can see right there with a giant red flag on it. And at, at the conclusion, when you were talking about just this, I didn't catch, are there individual subjects and the party is the epitome of, of, of his conception of subject, or there are, no, there are no individual subjects and only the party is? Well, here, here's the question. <laughs> or or here, here's, here's the difficult answer to your question. For Alain Badu, there are four discourses. There is science, which includes mathematics. There is uh, art. There is love. And there is politics. The scientific subject is not the scientist. It is the body of work. It is Newtonian physics. It is Einsteinian physics. It is quantum physics, it's tectonic plates, right? It's a body of work, and that forms the very subjectivity of which individual scientists are a part of, right, and working towards. So that would be a scientific subject. The artistic subject would be the body of work, not the artist, right? The body of work is contributed to the artist. And then, of course, this is, this is probably the basic level, or the most individualistic, would be love. The basic subject in love is not an individual, but a couple, right? That expresses love as an action to, together, right? Not as one dominating or controlling the other, or one individual subjectively loving another, right? The subject itself engages in certain functions. And so, any in, no in, as far as I can tell, no individual is a subject, qua individual. But any given individual could be the very essence of the subject. For example, Einstein asserting himself against previous theories or you know, conflicting theories as Einstein might engage as subject qua subject. Now, the political subject is not an individual. One individual is never political because the political itself is collective action. And the very essence of uh, po actual political action, which is not just administration, right? We live in a, a world of administration where we're administered by the government, but actual political action is through a subjectivity, and that's the party. And the individual is part of that insofar as they act politically as a group. Now, when can an individual be the political? Uh, ironically, this Alain Badiou, and I as well, defend what is pejoratively called the cult of personality. There are some times in the political party, whether Lenin, as you know and may touch on, is declaring himself the party against the Mensheviks and Katuski, um, or Lacan, who declares himself the party against the American um, psychoanalytics, or Mao, who declares himself the party against the revisionists, right? sometimes this very collective political action is embodied in a single individual. But that's extraordinarily rare. The real question is, what, does the, what are the functions of this entity, of this subject? And so, right, it would be the party. Does that answer, clarify? 
Yeah, I think so. And, and, and is, is it is subjectivity a relationship then, or an action? No, no. I mean, this yeah. is where Elaine Badu and Marxist Leninists are different from Negri. For them, there is no such thing as a revolutionary action, right? Shooting the czar might have no actual revolutionary action, like the Decemberists, right? That was an act, but it wasn't revolutionary because there was no subjectivity to carry out the actual revolutionary struggle. So the best way to understand a subject is it's a consistent function that generates outcomes. It's a procedure. Uh, it's a discursive procedure um, which is not simply reducible to the sum of its parts. Which is why you'll notice every one of those virtues cannot, insofar as they're a subject, cannot be separated and uh, removed from each other part, right? Because it's not about just the parts or the sum of the parts. It's the function of the parts together that make the subject. Does that clarify? This might also help, too. I mean, Bondu actually has a book called Ethics, and what she gives sort of, if I remember it correctly, it's three. But if you think about the four things that Greg mentioned, the art, the politics, the love, and science, science correct. Um, there's, these are things that generate truth for Badu, and they generate truth out of events. So politics, for example, there's truth in the French Revolution. Right? There's something new that happens, and there's certainly things that get preserved. And one of the main ethics for Badu is showing, expressing fidelity to that truth event, of the event of justice, of overthrowing the monarchy, and declaring the French Revolution as such. And so to express bad fidelity to an event like that, for Badu is unethical. And the other two he consists of are um, to name a void, which would be like the Nazis naming purity, as to where the communists named justice. Justice is a concept we can actually articulate in the world. Purity, like, right, what is purity as such? There's nothing really. If I may interject real here, I'll real quickly here, right? This would be a non-subject, right? Because the Nazis don't call to justice. What they call to is the law, the law of purity, the law of race, right? So they might have, they do have anxiety. They might have, well, they don't even have courage, right? What they are is an anxious terror over race. So, right, they would not constitute a subject proper. Um, but when he says fidelity to an event, to a truth, it's a truth procedure. The subject generates a, a truth procedure. Now, what does that mean? October Revolution. Who declares the October Revolution? Yes, Lenin, but it's the party. And it's not just that there's a bunch of people that makes it happen, but there's a subject which can carry through with the October Revolution, right? To storm the Winter Palace. And it's not just retroactive that you say, oh, I'm expressing fidelity to the event, but you assert that event as having already happened. At the eve of the October Revolution, Lenin asserts the October Revolution, which has not happened chronologically, but has happened subjectively for the political subject of the Bolsheviks, which allows him to seize the state. Does that difference make sense? Mm -hmm. um, if there's one more, I'll take one more, but then I'm going to turn it over to Johnny Boy. All right. Thank you.